بشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله واللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين Today is my third and final khutbah on taking some lessons from the story of Qarun this individual that Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the Quran that was from the people of Musa alayhi salam and who had some very particular qualities and I remind myself and all of you that the stories in the Quran are not just stories they're actually archetypes they are Allah could have told us so much more information about any individual in the Quran Allah could have told us their exact you know their exhaustive family background or exactly which town they lived in and all this other historical information but it seems to be missing in the Quran Allah will only tell us a handful of things in a story very limited information and the reason for that is whatever is told to us and whatever events are talked about or whatever conversations are talked about are the kinds of things that are going to repeat themselves throughout history. So what Allah chooses to tell us in any story is kind of what is going to happen in your story and in my story or in our lives. That's the purpose of these stories. They're not just historical events of something that happened a long time ago. They're living events, right? So whenever we learn something about, you know, whether it's Ibrahim alayhi salam or Isa alayhi salam or Musa alayhi salam or gardeners in Surah Al-Kahf, we're not just learning something that happened a long time ago, we're learning something about ourselves and something that happens in our lives. Having said that, the people that Qarun came into contact with tried to give him advice. And I've talked to you over the last couple of khutbahs about some of that advice. And the last bit of that advice is actually something I wanted to dedicate this khutbah to. It's the final bit of advice that they told him. The words are very simple. وَلَا تَبْغِي الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ don't pursue corruption in the land. Don't cor pursue corruption all around. So, and certainly Allah does not love those that cause corruption. That's, those are the words. Okay? Now what in the world does that mean? The few things you have to know, it's not just talking about corruption or pursuing corruption in a general sense. It's talking about someone who was wealthy, who was well off, and actually he was well off enough that other people would notice that he's actually different from them. He has more money than they do, his clothes are different from their clothes, his ride is different from their ride, right? So it's clearly, and his housing is different from other people's housing. And we learn later on in the story that he liked to show off that he had, he's different. He didn't just travel, he traveled fully decked out, you know, in, in, in all out, my God, this guy's got some kind of money. You know, there's some people that really need to show you how much money they make and they need to make a statement about that, right? I'm reminded of an interesting story. I was uh, traveling to a Muslim country one time and somebody had reached out to me. They volunteered to pick me up from the airport. And we got to know each other and I said, sure, you can pick me up from the airport. And the fellow came and picked me up. He, he had a 1993 RAV4, right? And, um, and he's driving me around. He drops me to the hotel. He says, at Fajr time, if you want me to take you to the masjid, I'll take you and you know, we can go get lunch, get whatever. And we got to know each other and I asked him, so what do you do? You, I mean, you're taking off from work? He goes, no, I don't work. I was like, you don't work, so how do you make it? Like, well, I, used to, I used to have a business, I sold it. I was like, what did you, what did you own? He said, well, I used to work for you know, the biggest oil and gas company um, in, in, in my country, and then I started my own company, and then it became public, and I sold it for $25 million last year, and I just um, don't do it. I just memorize Quran and hang out, and he's driving a, a RAV4 1993. You would not know. You would not know that this guy is in the multi-millions because he's just completely humble. And then on the other hand, I've met people that start making six figures for the first time and they act like Fir'aun should come get their autograph. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so you have people that when they have money, sometimes they can have a lot more money than you can imagine and you won't know it. Like they're not throwing that in your face. He didn't come pick me up in a helicopter. You know, he didn't have to, he could, he could buy a couple of Lamborghinis just on the side because he's bored on the weekend. He's not going to do that. He's just living a simple life and that's okay for him. He's completely happy with that because at the end of the day, you can have a 20 bedroom house, you're still going to sleep in only one room. You can have the biggest bed, but you only take up this much space, right? And when you're sleeping, you're just as dead. And if you're sleeping in a $2,000 bed or on the floor, you're still just as dead. Right? At the end of the day, whatever food you eat, is, some of it's going to get consumed and some of it's going to come out of you. Life is that simple. But for some people, they have to show what they have. They have to show it off. And this person, this Qarun, felt the need to show to others how much he has. And the other thing is, to spend on things, when, when someone looks up to you and you spend frivolous, frivolously, and you spend on luxuries and you like to show off how much luxury you have, 
then what happens is you, it's not just something you're doing for yourself. You're creating a false standard. You're creating corruption. Why? Because other people look at you and say, man, I wish I had that. I want to get a car like that. I want to get a house like that. I want to get a watch like that. I want to get clothes like that. I wish I had, I had this or I had that. And sometimes it's about material things. But nowadays, because of social media, we show off everything. People show off, you know, their children. People show off where they are on vacation. You know, like if you're standing in front of a beautiful waterfall somewhere on earth, then stand there, look at it and thank Allah. No, no, no. I want to stand and thank Allah, but I want to make sure somebody else sees how awesome my life is first. You know? And just show it and say, yeah, just having my vacation. And why do you have to report this to the world? Because there's a need to show off. And then the people who are watching it are going, man, their life is so great. My life is so terrible. I wish I had a life like that. And what does that do? It creates constantly a, you know, an ingratitude inside a person. Because you're always thinking, this person has, I don't have. They have, I don't have. They have, I don't have. Why can't I have that? You know, there, I've even seen people you know, show off how cute their babies are. MashaAllah, what a, what a terrible idea. You, you're asking for evil eye on your children. You're asking for people to be jealous of a healthy child or a beautiful child. What a horrible idea. And on top of that, there are so many women or so many fathers and mothers that can't have a child. And every time they look at that, they're just thinking to themselves, man, they have and I have nothing. And some people have lost a child. And they're looking at that and they're feeling terrible. But you don't care because you're just, this is how cute my baby is. I want the world to see how, how wonderful my child is and how, how cute they look and this and that. Like, what is this? This shallowness, this need to show. And so as a result of that, you create ingratitude. Now why is that such a big deal? Because our faith, our religion, it starts with the Fatiha. And the Fatiha begins with Alhamdulillah, doesn't it? To be grateful and to praise Allah. Alhamdulillah, praise and gratitude belongs to Allah. Praise and gratitude, as I've told you before, is not something you say from your tongue. It's something you feel. But if you feel like you're missing out all the time, and if you feel like you're comparing yourselves to somebody else all the time, then how are you ever going to be grateful? How are you ever going to not live out of jealousy? You know, this is exactly what the devil wants. The devil wants you to keep comparing yourself to somebody else. And now because of people that want to just show off their luxury or show off their happy lifestyle, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a happy lifestyle, but there's no reason to broadcast it. If Allah has given you a favor, good for you. There's no reason to put that out there. You know, just be grateful for Allah's favor. Even some people say, no, no, no. But the Qur'an says, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ When Allah has given you a favor, you should talk about it. You misunderstand the ayah. The ayah was saying, وَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ وَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ When it comes to the orphan, when it comes to the poor people that are having a hard time, then you go to, the Prophet ﷺ is told, go to them and remind them of the favor of Allah on you. In other words, remind them, I used to be an orphan too. I had hard times too. And Allah favored me. So Allah will favor you. And give, give hope. It's not when you go to a, an orphan and a poor person and you say, I know a hard time, you have hard times, check out my Rolex though, check it out. Alhamdulillah, there's a favor from Allah. Because Allah says, mention the favor of Allah. Ridiculous. Actually, you're supposed to give hope to people that Allah will bring you out of difficulty as He brought me out of difficulty. That is the favor of Allah that you should talk about. Remember your hard times and remind yourself and remind others when they're going through a hard time, Allah will pull you out. Allah will, this is just a test and Allah will bring you through it. Allah will get you out of it. That's actually the point. It's not to show off the things Allah has given you or Allah has given me. Whether it's good looks, whether it's money, whether it's family status, whether it's good news in your family, whether it's a new job, whatever it is. You know, when you get a new job, congratulations to you. But you know a friend of yours has been looking for a job for a year. You don't call him, hey bro, I got a job. Still looking? Yeah, alhamdulillah, though, I got a job that's so good, so good. You know, you're still looking, right? Still looking? Okay. And you know, some friend of yours couldn't you know, afford more college tuition and they, they, they stopped going to school. When you graduate, you shouldn't call them first and say, by the way, I graduated, bro. Let me, I sent you a picture of my diploma, just so it burns a little. Make dua for me. That kind of person is not going to make no dua for you. Okay? So that's, you're creating hatred in society. The other thing that it does, I mean, give you a, a, a real example of what it does. When you keep doing things in luxurious ways, you know, when people, some people can afford it. Some people can, when they want their child to have a wedding, they can get a really expensive hall. 
They can get a really fancy, like they can have a location wet wedding at a beach somewhere, at a resort somewhere, or they can fly in all their relatives and have them put up in a hotel, all this kind of stuff. And they have all kinds of meals coming in and a special designer cake or whatever else. They can do all that, they can afford it. But then the people who are attending that wedding, some of them are not very wealthy. And they're like, our daughter's gonna get married next year. Man, we gotta compete. Because all these relatives are going to say, oh, we went to that wedding, look at that wedding, and this one's in a masjid? <laughs> You're going to have, seriously, are you that poor? No, and then you know what they do? Then people like our, us, we take loans, we take loans so we can compete with the people who can afford. And we put ourselves in financial difficulty, and we, you know, we, we get into riba, we get into all kinds of sins, because when you want something that somebody else has, then you figure, I don't care, I'll do anything to get it. If they got to show off their wedding and take those pictures or whatever, I want to be able to, those, those fake pictures, that's what I need in my life. Without that, my life is incomplete. So I'm going to put myself and my family through whatever financial misery, whatever problems, just so we can be fake just like them. Just for that purpose. And you ruin yourself, you bring ruin to even a newly married couple because they start their life with financial debt. And how many, you know, if, you, if you talk to marital counselors or you know, people in the family therapy profession, you find out how many families are in deep conflict because of money issues. And you started people's lives off, lives off with money issues. Why? Because somebody created a false standard. And when they created that standard, you're like, well, how can I do anything? How can I? And then people treat, it's not just about marriages, it's even how, how we treat children. Our, not even children, our grown sons and daughters. Our grown sons and daughters. Allah has made the door to halal open. There's a, and, and we say, no, 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 not until our son graduates. No, 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 not until he gets a job. No, 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 not until he buys a house. No, 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 not until he owns at least another property. No, 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 not until he gets established. And the son's like 35 years old, and the kids are not, the parents aren't getting to let him get married. And every time some proposal comes, the mom's got a rocket launcher on her shoulder. She shoots it down, like, no, 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 not yet, not, not, not for our son. No, no, no. And you think 35 years old, this guy's going to go to school, college, university, in the professional life, and no fitna is going to hit? He's not going to do any haram? What delusion are you living in? This is creating facade on the earth. Because of an image. Because you're more concerned about an image. وَلَا تَبْغِي الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ So this, you know, this showing off creates this vying, and it creates this false standard. I mean, I used to be given an example. You know, in, in, in many Muslim countries, and this have, even happens here, you have people that have these luxurious parties. Like a aqiqa. Now aqiqa is supposed to be something simple, but we want to have 500 people. And we want to have this like big old thing. Or people buy a house, right? And they have a house, you know, welcome to our new home kind of party. And when people come to that, those kinds of parties, and this is our four bedroom, this is our, they're giving you a tour. This is our bathroom. Nobody needs to see your bathroom. It's okay. But you want to give everybody a tour. And this is where our kids sleep, and this is where the other kids sleep, and this is where the other kids sleep. And some of the people you invited have four kids and they live in a one bedroom. And the kids sleep on the couch. How do they feel? How do they feel? Did you earn those people's du'as? Is that what you did? You know? When Allah has given you, it's okay. But it's, it's not right to go around flaunting it. It's not okay to do that. It creates corruption. And so, you know, you know making people feel bad creates an animosity in society. Allah says, وَلَا تَبْغِي الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Now, the, 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 let's take a step back. You know, living well, the Prophet ﷺ used to dress well. He had exotic perfumes, ﷺ. He liked eating good food. Having good things in your, in your life is not a bad thing. If you can afford it, you should get it. That's also a favor of Allah on you. It's completely fine. And that's something not condemned. But the extreme of it, the extreme of it, israf, going overboard, and then showing off, and spending frivolously. This is where the problem comes. When we start spending money on things that there's no need to spend money on it, what does Allah call that? He said, وَلَا تُبَذِّرْ تَبْذِيرًا إِنَّ الْمُبَذِّرِينَ كَانُوا إِخْوَانَ shayateen. Don't spend like that because people who spend wastefully are brothers to the devil. إِخْوَانَ shayateen. وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِرَبِّهِ كَفُورًا And the devil has been extremely ungrateful to Allah. Take the example of our children. You know, some of our kids, they have so many toys at home that you can't even walk in, your, in their room without stepping on something hazardous. And some of them have gaming systems, a PS4, a PS whatever portable, 
whatever Nintendo's out there, whatever systems out there, that whether it's the Wii or whatever, whatever else, and they want this new game that came out, a new game that came out, a new game that came out. And now many of our kids have iPhones and you know Android devices, and they've got download after download after download, and you know they've got these games and these luxuries, and new, new movie comes out, we have to go see it, we have to go watch it, and every time you get them one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Do you see that your children are really grateful, you know, and they're happy with it? How long does that happiness last? About 24 hours? And then after that, the game you bought them, or the, you know, the, the clothes you got them, there's something else still left in the store, Dad, let's go back. There's plenty of merchandise we can still get. There's plenty of other games we can still get. We're creating ingratitude. We're creating not being satisfied with what we have in front of us. This is وَلَا تَبْغِي الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ And when that happens to Muslims, when Muslims become like this, when we just want to consume, 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 and show off, show off, and show off, then what's the difference between us and people who don't believe in an afterlife? If you want to turn everything in this life into heaven, and you just want to go from one luxury to the next to the next, why are you interested in the next life anyway? What's the difference left? For somebody who doesn't believe in an afterlife, and they just want more luxury, and more fun, and more entertainment, and more consumption, and more showing off in this life, then there's no difference left between believer and disbeliever. Practically speaking, you could say, I have a Muslim name, a Muslim sounding name, we have a few rituals, but your mentality is no different from anybody else's. And there's a dua in the Quran, we ask Allah, رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Our master, do not turn us into a trial for people that have disbelieved. Do not turn us into a trial for them. Do not let us become a trial for them. You know, you would imagine Allah would say, or may, teach us to say, don't let them be a trial for us. Don't put the, they, because they will put us in fitna. They will attack us. They will pressure us. They will curse us. They will, they will blame us. They will hate us. And therefore, they will become a trial for us. No, no, no. The ayah says, don't make us a trial for them. Why? Because if they see us behaving in this way, why would they ever want to come to this faith? Because everything, everything we represent in our lifestyle is what they already have. So why would they even come anywhere near this faith? All the things that make our religion blessed disappear. And what greater corruption in the land that the people, the people who say La ilaha illallah, the people who believe in Alhamdulillah, the people who believe in Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the way they live says nothing about La ilaha illallah. The way they act, the way their attitudes are, their priorities are, they say nothing about Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That their mentality is just like ذَلِكَ مَبْلَغُهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ You know? They, that these people, the extent of their knowledge and the extent of their thinking is limited to this world. That's all they ever think about is this world. This is facade on the earth. So your decisions, personal decisions to be this way, because no, you know, and we know in this day and age better than any other, now is a day and age, now we're, we're living in a day and age where no decision is personal because everything's out on social media. You're creating an impact. Whatever you do, whatever you say, whatever picture you post, Whatever comment you made, you created influence online. Whether two people saw it, or two hundred people saw it, or two million people saw it, you are now a source of influence. Either you're following everybody else, or you're, you're leaving something good behind. What is it? What impression are you giving people? You know, what impression is it that you're giving people? How, how obsessed have you and I become about showing off? About, you know, how many filters do you have to go through to say, I'm going to post this picture? <laughs> you know? To, to, to give images of false happiness. We need to cut all of this out from our lives. We have to cut all of that and be authentic people. This is actually the advice he was given. And you know what is, as I leave you, you know what his response was? He said, I was given all of this because of knowledge that I have. I'm, I'm a millionaire because I made good business decisions. I'm really smart. I got a degree. I, got this, I worked hard and got this job. Nobody's saying that you didn't get this job. Nobody's saying that you didn't, you, know, you didn't do well and all of that. First of all, there are people that are much smarter than you and me that make no money. There are people that are much more talented that have nothing. And there are people that have no degrees and they have no qualifications and they make a hundred times more than you. Isn't that the reality? So when someone says, I have all of this because of me, well, there's plenty of people who have what you have and more, and Allah decided not to give them. 
they're selling bananas on the street somewhere. And there are plenty of people that have nothing like what you have, and yet Allah gave them anyway. Allah gave them anyway. So when you and I start thinking, what we have is because of our qualifications, or what we possess, or what makes us special, what makes us unique, that's why we have what we have. That's our first problem. The second problem with his statement is, he didn't answer any of what was said to him. The problem wasn't, you shouldn't have money, you shouldn't have wealth, you shouldn't live well. That wasn't the problem. The problem was, you shouldn't be a show-off. You shouldn't, be show, you shouldn't be making people feel bad. You shouldn't be behaving in this socially irresponsible way because it creates influence. It creates a negative kind of influence. And in response to that, he gets defensive instead of addressing the issue itself. He just says, but I earned it. But I deserve it. Okay, well, you want to be defensive that way? This is what happens to people that won't, don't want to use common sense. They don't want to use common sense. A criticism, the criticism was A, and you change the subject to B. Like it has nothing to do with it. Like you change the conversation altogether. This deflection is actually what a lot of people use to not look in the mirror. To actually not address what the criticism is, what the issue is. And you turn it into something else. And what does Allah say when He says, oh, Okay, well I, I earned all of this. إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيْتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي أَوَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَهْلَكَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنَ الْقُرُونَ Doesn't He know Allah has destroyed so many generations before Him? Oh, this one guy, this one guy says, I earned it. And Allah is so angry, He doesn't even talk about a person who said this before Him. Allah says, I have destroyed nations with this attitude. Entire nations with this attitude. مَنْ هُمْ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُ قُوَى وَأَكْثَرُ جَمْعَى They were much more powerful than He was. They had way more wealth gathered than He did. وَلَا يُسْأَلُ عَنْ ذُنُوبِهِمُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ And criminals are not going to be even asked about their sins. They're just going to get wiped out. They're just going to get wiped. This angers Allah so much that instead of Allah describing what they are going to get in hellfire, in the next life, on judgment day, Allah describes after His words, I earned this, I'm entitled to it. Allah says, have you not seen what I've done to entire nations in this world? In this world. This is Allah threatening people that are disoblivious after being Muslim. Because he was actually from the Banu Israel. So they, he believed in Musa alayhi salam. He believed in Tarat. He believed in Allah. He was a Muslim. And a Muslim having this attitude, Allah makes it, it makes Allah so angry that Allah decides to teach people like that a lesson in this life. Let's not become like those people. Qarun is a scary case because Qarun gets punished in this life. He got, Allah sunk him into the earth along with his home in this life. When he used to walk by, people used to say, Ah, oh, وَيْكَ أَنَّمَا أُوْتِيَ مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيَ You know, أُوتِيَ قَارُونَ if, if only we could be given what Qarun was given, man, I wish I had what he had. He's got the life. And then when after, after his home was sunk, people were like, Oh my God, Allah saved us. Thank God we're not like him. So the eyes open up when it's taken away. When the palace was there, when the luxury gate was there, when the expensive ride was outside, man, Slow down the car, I want to look at this. I want to check it out. And after it was sunk, Astaghfirullah, keep driving, don't even look. You know? So let's open our eyes before that happens. Before that happens. Because that's what it's worth. At the end of the day, the, the wealthy and the poor, the one who has and the one who doesn't have, all of them are going to sink into the earth, aren't they? We're all going to be sunk into the earth. That's not, none of this is going to matter. So don't be deluded by material things, social things. Status things, these statuses and these socials and these likes and dislikes online, that's all fake stuff. Nobody really likes you and doesn't matter. Because even the people who love you and people who love me won't matter on judgment day. Mama's going to run away from you. Dad's going to say, I got nothing to do with you. Your children are going to walk away from you. They're actually going to say to Allah, Ya Allah, وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِهِ Take everyone on the earth, Ya Allah. I offer you humanity. They can go to hell. Can you please save me? That's what we're going to be saying on Judgment Day. That's literally in the Qur'an. So, and that's the real relationships. What about these fake likes that you run after? Or these fake comments that you learn? Oh, somebody had a good comment. You keep checking. Who praised me? Who praised me? Ah, I feel better. I feel worth it now. This, this, is, this is facade. This fakeness, this is facade. And we have to cut it out of our lives. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us authentic people. May Allah Azza wa Jal not make us a false standard for others to fall into corruption and to become ungrateful themselves. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us content with what we have and be grateful to Allah for what we have. And may Allah Azza wa Jal make us a source of 
you know, spreading good examples to the people around us with the way we carry ourselves, with the way we communicate, and the way we spread anything that we spread, anything that we say should become a source of goodness for others. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim.